Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the muscles that stabilize the glenohumeral joint. That is the head of the humerus in the glenohumeral joint known as the shoulder joint. These muscles come together to form a tenderness sheath over this joint that we term the rotator cuff. So, let's have a look. First thing is you can see I've got an anterior or front-on view of the scapula and the humerus. And here we've got a posterior or view from the back, again, of the scapula and of the humerus. So when we look at the rotator cuff, it's made up of four muscles, but I'm going to add a fifth one. Now, what are these four muscles? Now, the muscles that I want to have a look at in their order are going to be, number one, we're going to look at the supraspinatus. All right, the supraspinatus is referring to, we're going to look at the back of the scapula here. And when we look at the back, we can see that there's the spine of the scapula. Now above that, we've got the suprascapular fossa, and this is where the supraspinatus muscle originates. This is the origins of it. And so what we have is the supraspinatus, it originates here, and it sends muscle fibers down the back, sends it underneath the acromion and we can bring it out over here sends it out back here underneath the acromion and attaches to something that we call the greater tubercle now when we have a look let's have a look we've got the supraspinatus originating here it sends muscle fibers underneath the acromion you can see the acromion here but behind the coracoid and it connects up so it inserts at the very top of the greater tubercle. Now I want you to think about what the activity of this is going to be. When this muscle contracts, it's going to be pulling on the humerus and it's going to lead to the first part of abduction. So what the supraspinatus does, its function is the very first part of abduction, initiating abduction. What takes over after that? The deltoid muscles. So we can say supraspinatus, and its function is to initiate abduction. The next muscle I want to talk about is going to be the infraspinatus. And the infraspinatus is going to be underneath the spine of the scapula. Again, we're talking at the back here. Now, what you're going to see is it's going to originate from this particular area here. And what these muscles do is while they may originate here, they attach at the greater tubercle, but below, just below that of the supraspinatus. So what do you think that activity is going to be? Have a look. We're at the back. We've got the infraspinatus. It, its origins are at the fossa underneath the spine of the scapula. It attaches at the greater tubercle. Now the greater tubercle, there's a greater tubercle and lesser tubercle of the humerus, right? The greater tubercle is quite lateral. The lesser tub tubercle is anterior, right? Now between them, there's something called the bicipital groove. So we'll talk about them in a sec. So we've got the infraspinatus attaching in at the greater tubercle. When it contracts, what's it gonna do? Remember, this is from the back. So it contracts it's going to bring the humerus back. This is called lateral or external rotation. So what the infraspinatus does is external rotation. All right, next one. The next one sits underneath the infraspinatus. It's called the teres minor. And the teres minor also attaches to the greater tubercle. Its origins are here at the back of the scapula and it inserts at the greater tubercle. But again, below. What do you think teres minor is going to be doing? Well, teres minor is going to play a very similar role to that of infraspinatus. That is going to be external or lateral rotation. All right, what's the fourth muscle for the rotator cuffs? That's going to be on the front side, you can see that you've got this fossa here, this big groove at the front of the scapula. Well, what we have here 
is the subscapularis. So there is a muscle that originates here. And the subscapularis, the way that it inserts in is that it's going to attach to the lesser tubercle. So its origins are in the fossa of the scapula and it attaches at the lesser tubercle. Now, what does that mean? What role will that play? This is at the front. It's going to be anterior, or sorry, medial rotation, internal or medial rotation. So this is going to be the subscapularis. And this is going to be internal rotation. Now, these are the four muscles of the rotator cuff. And as you can see, they initiate abduction. Two play a role in external or lateral rotation. One plays a role in internal rotation. But there's a last one I want to talk about, which isn't part of the rotator cuffs, but is important in stabilizing this glenohumeral joint. This is going to be the teres major. Now the teres major originates at the bottom pocket here. And what you'll find is that it sends muscle fibers to attach in at the bicipital groove. Now the bicipital groove is the groove that sits between the lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle, and it's this line right here, which means we're gonna have muscle fibers that are coming up and under from under here and attaching in here, okay? So what this ends up doing is it leads to internal rotation. So what we've got is the teres major, because this is the back, right? If it was attached to the back, it would be pulling it back, but it's not, it's attached to the front and it's leading to internal rotation. So what we've got is four muscles of the rotator cuff, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, subscapularis, and then another stabilizer or another um, centralizer. So what happens is if you lift your arm above 90 degrees, teres major kicks in to stabilize or centralize that glenohumeral joint. So this is the rotator cuff.